So, here's the thing. I love board games. According to Board Game Geek, I have around about 120 games in my collection. Now recently, my friend Daniel posted a novel and unique video, a top 10 list. I'd never seen it done before, but it was really clever and I thought I'd try it myself. He chose board games and well, I guess you could use it for anything, but I'm just going to do board games too. You can check out the link to his video in the description below. And if I can work it out, in the card it should pop up right now. Did it work? I have no idea. I don't do this YouTube thing. Or lists. Or board game media content. This could be a terrible idea. Have you watched it yet? You really should. It's a very good list. It has some fine additions, but it is subjectively wrong. I mean, many of the games I haven't even played, let alone own. So, in response, here's my list of the top 10 best board games posted on YouTube. As is traditional, I'll be presenting them in alphabetical order. Number two, Battlestar Galactica, the board game. My friends and I played Battlestar Galactica 10 times in the first week of release in Ireland. By the end of that week, we were playing six player games in about 90 minutes. A hidden trader game, this defines the genre for me, and in my opinion, has still yet to be beat. Much of this comes from the setting, as I'm a huge fan of the series, but I do find it's a really great implementation of the core mechanics. Rounds feel like episodes of the show, some quiet and filled with dread, some explosive with action and deep cuts to the dwindling supplies. It's thrilling, heart-pounding gameplay, and I have so many wonderful stories and in-jokes that I can share with my friends. Accusing everyone at the table of being a silent when you hold a card in your hand is hilarious. Discussing the game afterwards and discovering that there was no silence for most of the game is equally amazing. This has gotten played so much that the core game box lid fell apart, so this is when the expansion lives. I have all the expansions and it is a true treasure in my collection. BSG stood proudly in the number one spot for a long, long time, and it still holds the second spot with a fracking bullet. Number eight, Captain Sonar. Captain Sonar is, put simply, chaos in a box. It's real-time submarine combat, 4v4 in the depths of the ocean. You work as a team to pilot your boat, except work is being very generous. 90% of the time your submarine is broken at best, on fire more likely, sailing in circles and feeling very, very lost. But that final 10% is thrilling, zeroing in on your enemy, all the while knowing that the closer you get to them, the closer they get to you. The four unique roles in the sub are each fun, and each player can choose the role that best suits their personality. Are you the captain, in charge of giving orders? The navigator, silently listening to the opposing captain, trying to work out their position. The first mate, readying systems and keeping the captain up to date, on the status of the boat you all share. Or the engineer, breaking stuff. Just breaking stuff and panicking. Captain Sonar is absolutely not for everyone. It is heart pounding, anxiety inducing stuff. It's also a tough teach having to go over four entirely unique mini games and how they interact with each other. But I can teach the whole thing in about 20 minutes. And games only last about 30, so in an evening, players can try out different roles over multiple games. I adore Captain Sonar. Whether I'm playing or just watching, it always makes me laugh. Number 10, Cosmic Encounter. I think this is the oldest game on my list, originating in the 1970s. Cosmic Encounter is a true classic, a negotiation game at heart, where you'll find yourself wheeling and dealing more often than you will be in conflict. It's a simple enough rule set, with a huge variety of aliens, each one bending the rules slightly in their favour. You'll laugh as you promise the world to an ally, knowing full well that you've doomed them all to the void before they've even committed a single ship to your side. You'll build trust with another player, aiding each other as you colonise planets, and then, just as you're about to break that friendship, they'll stab you in the back and steal victory. This game never gets old. Each expansion has new rules, but to be honest, I ignore all of those and buy it entirely for the 30 or so new races that each one contains. As long as you can take a friendly backstabbing or being ganged up on when you're about to win, then you owe yourself the chance of seeing why this game is still popular 40 years after it was first published. Number six, Deep Sea Adventure. Deep Sea Adventure is a tiny box that contains huge laughs. A push your look game about a group of divers all diving to collect treasure from the depths of the ocean. You all want to get the best treasure, but there's a catch. You all share one air tank. As soon as someone grabs something, the clock starts ticking down to that last breath. Played over three rounds, the hilarity of the situation quickly crystallizes. What are you doing, Greg? Stop grabbing everything you land on. You'll kill us all! Number one, Inish. Inish stole the number one spot on my list as soon as I finished the first wobbly game. It kind of cheated to get there because it's based around Irish mythology, and I'm from Ireland. Irish mythology is rich and varied, and the game referenced a lot of the stories I grew up reading in my school textbooks. More than that, it had the art that I remembered from my textbooks as well. At first, I couldn't believe it was the actual art, but a clever IP-infringing copycat. Jim Fitzpatrick is a massive, world-renowned artist. What was his art be doing in a board game? But it is. 
All the action cards are licensed pieces of art from his collection, and they are stunning. That's what drew me to the game, but it's not what held on to me for three years. Inish is a dudes in a map area control game about becoming the new king of the island. It is bright and colourful with an engaging tail presence to draw the eyes in, and a tight, clean, fast gameplay that is easy to teach and intuitive to play. It's also one of those rare games that works in all player accounts from two to four. I can't always wrap my head around most strategy games, but Inish is on my level. I can see my path begin to appear in the opening rounds and what I need to focus on for victory. More often than not, I still don't win, but I always love every game I play. Number three, Karuba. Super easy to teach and play. Karuba isn't for everyone, but I love it. A pathfinding game about racing to get to four colorful temples, Karuba is a light, fun, fast affair. It's a great gateway game, as even complete board game novices will understand it. And it's very accessible to younger gamers with a family-friendly theme and simultaneous gameplay, leading to little or no downtime. Karuba is a game for two to four players, but I actually own two copies, so I can play up to eight players. And my dream is to own a third, so I can play 12. Number five, Quantum. A strategy game about colonizing planets, Quantum is a really bright, colorful game where big, chunky, frosted dice represent your ships. With a modular board built of clean square tiles, the universe of quantum is unlimited in possibilities. Because the ships are the dice in the play space, who's doing what where is really clear. There's no hidden surprise gotchas with all the information laid out for everyone to see. And rolling those chunky frosted combat dice is so satisfying. I rarely win quantum, but I love seeing that last explosive turn that leads to a player's victory. I've managed it once myself, and it felt thrilling. Once. Still worth being on this list. Number four, Corridor. The first summer we moved to Vancouver, we were invited to a friend's house for dinner. After a lovely meal and some pleasant chat, my friend Sean asked if I play board games. I got very excited and was about to wax poetic on my favourite games when he pulled out a wooden board and some pieces. I don't play chess or backgammon or Scrabble or those old games. I play new, modern classics and I instantly fell in love with Corridor. It's super simple. On your turn, you either move one space or place a wall. All you gotta do to win is get to the other side of the board before your opponent gets to yours. Simple. It plays in about 10 minutes, and it's easily my most played game in my collection. The board is still in good condition because it's wooden, but the box is taped up on all corners and crushed on top. I've played against adults older and wiser than me, and kids as young as six, and I've been beaten by both. Because games are so fast, even when they lose, kids who normally have a problem with losing in activities have no problem with corridor, and usually just want to start another game immediately. I've even played it with children with mild to moderate autism, and they love it. I've never fake lost to anyone, but I regularly really lose, and it always feels great. Number nine, Sheriff of Nottingham. Sneaking contraband through security shouldn't be this easy, or fun, but in Sheriff of Nottingham, it's both. Load up your goodie bag, hand it over, and hold a straight face while you tell the sheriff you have five cheese for your market stand. Then watch in horror as she decides to open it, and laugh in delight as she finds indeed you do have those five cheese. Now, try that again, but slip in a crossbow and some mead. Sheriff of Nottingham plays fast, with little to no downtime. Everyone is always engaged, whether you're the sheriff examining everybody's bag, or a merchant trying to convince her to leave your bag alone but check Greg's. There's no way Greg could have bagged five apples two turns in a row. What are the chances? Oh, ouch. Sorry, Sheriff. That stings. And I guess Greg locked in Apple King already, huh? Well, I guess it's time for me to focus on chickens. Spicy chickens. Number seven, Skull. Skull is a simple game. Play a disc or place a bet. How many discs can you turn over without revealing a skull? If you make a bet that no one else will raise, then turn over that many discs, starting with your own. Reveal only roses and you win a point. Do that twice and you win the game. Real, real easy, right? Skull is all about bluffing and catching your opponents in a trap. Can you convince them that you've only played roses? What if they all pass around? How stupid will you look when you flip over your own tiles and reveal a skull? Oh, you'll look real stupid, and everyone will laugh. And you'll talk about it all week until the next game night. And then you'll go do it again. Skull is really fast. You'll play multiple games in the evening, either as the opener before a big game, or after as a palate cleanser. So that's my list. I hope you enjoyed it. Here they are again in alphabetical order. Battlestar Galactica, the board game. Captain Sonar. Cosmic Encounter. Deep Sea Adventure. Inish. Karuba. Quantum. Corridor, Sheriff of Nottingham, Skull. I hope you try some of these out because they truly are gems in my collection. Thanks for watching.